Yes, my copy of The Art of Memory is yellowed, dirty, nasty. Doesn't smell that good either. But nonetheless, it's one of the most successful memory improvement books of all time. And that's ironic, given that its author says she never tried to use the memory techniques she discussed in such detail. Frances A. Yates made a mark nonetheless. She was a meticulous researcher, and The Art of Memory is not her only book to touch on the world of mnemonics, but it's certainly her most famous book and the most important. So we're going to dig into and explore what Yates discovered about the method of loci and the memory palace technique, and we're going to look at some historical figures who used the techniques to learn faster and remember more too. So. If you love all things memory, including how to improve it and use memory techniques as an art, get subscribed, hit thumbs up if you aren't already subscribed, and let's talk about who the heck was Francis Yates anyway. And for the love of memory, let me know how you find the art of memory. Now, Marjorie Jones in Francis Yates and the Hermetic Tradition says that Francis Yates was one of the most important intellectuals in post-war England. As Jones points out, Yeats is also significant for women's history. You know, we tend to focus on scholars of memory like Aristotle, Ramon Lull, Giordano Bruno, and Robert Flood. But beyond Lynn Kelly, Mary Carruthers, and memory athletes who share their mnemonics like Katie Kermode, there don't seem to be that many women in the conversation. In fact, many people express surprise when I use she and her to discuss Yeats. They tend to have assumed that she was a man, an impression perpetuated by the fact that her picture is not included with many of the books that I've seen. I don't think I've ever seen a book that has her picture beyond this biography, which is well worth reading, by the way. Yates led a scholarly life, and Jones gives some indication in her biography that Yates may have treated one of her main topics, the great memory master Giordano Bruno, as a kind of symbolic father figure. But Yates died in 1981 before completing a biography of her own, an autobiography, and she had started it, and it was called The Bee Book. And it would be lovely to know more about Yates' life from her own perspective, especially because she didn't use memory techniques herself. I think we could play Freud all day long with any daddy issues that Yates may have projected onto Giordano Bruno, but I think the, the subtlety here is that Yates apparently did have a very good memory, and I wonder if it's really true that she didn't use the memory techniques. In fact, she apparently drew the memory wheel that you see on the cover and tried to reproduce what it might have been going on in Giordano Bruno's mind. And so I find it a little bit difficult to believe that you would go through that amount of drawing and the planning that probably was involved in creating that iconic drawing that you wouldn't have tried the memory techniques. So whether or not that led her to having a good memory or not, I don't know. But at the end of the day, if you're a researcher like that and a writer, probably you're going to have better memory because of what's called context dependent memory and you're just constantly in the context of the business of remembering what you want to write about and exercising your memory as you write about it and then having your memory triggered as you edit your own writing. So it wouldn't surprise me if she had a lift in her memory. Authors spend so much time in writing that their semantic memory just generally is better. And especially when you're dealing with matters of intellectual history at large. Okay, so what are the primary principles discussed in The Art of Memory when it comes to mnemonics? Well, Yates says in The Art of Memory that her primary goal is really ultimately to better understand Giordano Bruno. She had written about him in another book called Giordano Bruno and the Hermetic Tradition, and she's also written about Bruno in the context of Robert Flood. So we want to contextualize Bruno's historical moment and Yates has done this, and she does it in The Art of Memory by going much further back than Bruno to the ancient world, and many interesting names come up as a result, along with the core mnemonic strategies that go with those historical figures. So let's focus on these strategies. The core ones are the memory palace technique, or the method of loci, and it's associated often with Simonides of Kos. And the use of giving speeches is described in Rhetorica ad Herennium, which some people at a particular period of time thought was written by Cicero. Then there are the memory wheels, which are thought to be originated by Ramon Lull. There's Giulio Camillo's memory theater, 
and of course Robert Flood's Theater of the World, and Giordano Bruno's Alphabetical Method for Rapidly Developing Mnemonic Images. Now, Yates is particularly interested in how Bruno's mnemonic strategies connect with his cosmological ideas. But not everyone agrees with Yates' interpretation that he was hermetic. For one thing, there have been new discoveries since Yates stopped writing about memory, and some people think that these discoveries should not be taken seriously. But I think they're well worth considering. So one person is Dilwyn Knox. He suggests that Yeats' interpretation of Bruno as a hermeticist is forced. And I tend to agree with this. But as John Michael Greer has suggested, everyone who works on Bruno is bound to invent their own version. And I'm working on a book called The Infinite Memory Palace Technique of Giordano Bruno, and I'm quite aware of this because as I write about him, I am inventing my own version of Bruno. So I think the core difference between what I'm doing and what Yates did in Art of Memory is that I've used the techniques in a way she says she never did. So all of this discussion with Yates really becomes complicated when we think about her claim that she never used the techniques under discussion. Now, ultimately, that doesn't really matter if you're writing a history. I just think it would be really interesting if she had, and so that's part of why I do what I do, is to bring together the history, the philosophy, in some cases the cosmology, together with my own personal practice, including some weird experiments that I've done, such as building a solar system memory palace out of my body to remember the classic solar system that the italic hermetics tended to refer to. So that's all fine and dandy, fun experimentation. But let's go a little bit deeper into some of these systems. So we have the memory palace, we have number systems that are now sometimes referred to as the major system, we have the journey method, the pegword method, spaced repetition, and we even have meditation on topics, or what we might now call reflective thinking. Yates didn't live to see some of the aboriginal memory techniques that we now know about in great detail from people like Tyson Yonkaporta and Lynn Kelly in her book Memory Craft, but that's okay. She still did a good job. She finished writing The Art of Memory in 1965, and we probably wouldn't have had the countless works on memory without her inspiration. So the art of memory, has it stood the test of time? Generally, I'm a fan of all memory improvement books, and generally, reading makes you smarter. But is the art of memory in my top five of memory improvement books? Well, personally, no. I've taken dozens of notes on it, and if you want to learn more about the history of memory techniques, it is an absolute must. But if you want to learn how to improve your memory, then you might walk away from the art of memory confused. So I would suggest that you read some of the primary texts that Yeats refers to throughout the art of memory. And some of these are very easy to find online, and others you can find in Mary Carruthers' The Medieval Craft of Memory. I cannot recommend this book enough. It is fantastic. For an even more direct path to your own personal memory mastery, pepper in people like Harry Lorraine, Tony Bazan, and books like Moonwalking with Einstein. And of course, I'm honored if you read any of my books, including The Victorious Mind. I probably never would have written it without having read Yeats. In fact, Yeats opened an entire world for me because I wouldn't have known how deep into history these techniques go. And I personally probably have learned the most from Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas and Giordano Bruno with his infinite memory palace technique. And at the end of the day, I agree with Jones that Yeats was a tremendous scholar. Although her takes on Bruno are a bit hard for me to swallow after having read a lot of Bruno myself, Yeats' overall scholarship on the role of memory throughout history is profound. You know, learning is never direct. It's not a straight line. And as you learn to use memory techniques, informing yourself about the history of people who use them before you, like Simonides of Kos. Oh, it's just amazing. And in the story of Simonides of Kos, you realize that actually that story is itself memorable because of some of the mnemonic elements that are built into it. So go ahead, get any memory book that you want, make sure Art of Memory is part of it, and you'll discover through taking action with the techniques yourself, things that Yeats apparently did not, and something even more profound. When you use the art of memory, it is 
more than an art. It is a craft. It is a science. It is an art in the sense of a martial art of the mind. And that's so important because another thing that Yeats glosses over in The Art of Memory, well, maybe not totally, but I think she could have gone a little bit further, which is the role of critical thinking. Ultimately, that's what I think The Art of Memory is really all about at large. It's about using your memory to make better decisions, to solve problems quickly, to accurately assess the world, cross compare lots and lots of different data points, and then take action based on wisdom each and every step of the way. Another memory master named Hugh of St. Victor said that in Latin, omnium expetendorum prima es sapentia in qua perfecti boni, forma consistent. Choose wisdom above all things, because in the choice of wisdom is goodness itself. So go ahead and check out the imaginary memory palace technique of Hugh of St. Victor next.